please let me introduce you, Tomasz Kubina. Uh, he will talk about automated network OS testing. You can start, Tomasz. Okay, uh, can you hear me? I guess, yes. So, Dorijan, hello, welcome. Thanks for coming to, to see my presentation. Uh, it will be about uh, automated ne network uh, operating system testing. I'm uh, working uh, in uh, Orange Business Services, which uh, is a worldwide uh, operator. You can see my mail address. If you have any questions to, to contact me after the press, we can discuss uh, more uh, and other points. OK, so who I am? I'm basically a network development engineer. I started uh, as a tester of the network operation systems, which uh, basically means Cisco iOS and Juniper Junos. Uh, by the way, is there anybody who is working on daily basis with this guy, with one of these two systems? Yeah, okay, at least two, three guys. Uh, okay, so I'm working in the OBS since uh, 2010, and then uh, let's say around two or three years ago, I started to work as a software developer or so on the various projects related to the automations mainly. Then also, uh, I'm responsible for some Linux, VMware, or XE administration. Okay, so as I said, Orange Business Service is a worldwide telecommunication operator and a service provider, which is mainly operating on the enterprise market. Our main uh, business is that if you have uh, some big company which has some office in India, for example, second office in Europe and headquarters in US, the usual task is okay, we need some interconnection of our offices with the headquarters. So basically, we are providing different solutions, basically, uh, mostly built on the, on the private VPN networks. Uh, our core network is uh, based on the, let's say, protocols which are no, well known for the networking guys like L3 VPN, L2 VPN, BGP, ISIS as an IGP protocol. Then uh, MPLS, uh, we are providing COS, IPv6, LDP, and etc. Right? A lot of lot of protocols, lot of features which we are having in our network. In my department, we have three labs with uh, mostly real uh, physical devices, but we have also some virtual devices. And uh, with these labs, we are trying to simulate uh, the ne real network we have uh, worldwide. And on these uh, networks, which are in the in the labs. It's a small scale up, but uh, we're trying to simulate the network and uh, test the features before they are released to the, to the network and pro, uh, available for the customers. We have uh, okay, three labs, we have three locations and around 35 people which are working on daily basis uh, on this, uh, in this environment. And uh, what me and uh, my colleagues I usually do, we are testing uh, these networking operation systems for uh, for all the features we need so usually we are preparing the test bed we are checking if the test bed at the beginning of the test is fine so it means that uh, for example if you are providing a bgp peering to our customer we need to be sure that the the latest release that or not the latest but the release we we plan to install on the network is uh, providing the all the bgp things the configuration the features that uh, we need for our customers so we are testing it, uh, usually that, okay, we have some test bed without the configuration, then we are putting that configuration that we want, that we need for the customers. Then we are checking the state of the box after the configuration was done. What if it's behaved correctly, if uh, there is monitoring the device for some crash or not, then we can, uh, as a part of the test of this feature, we can do some negative events, so we can try to reel the box we can try to shut, no shut the link, simulate the flap of the link, simulate flap of the BGP. So generally to check the, the stability of the feature and the uh, stability of the box. So uh, we are sure that once this new software release is in the network, it's doing what, uh, what we need. So basically our, our checks are something like 30% uh, of, of, uh, of the test is configuration and 70% is checking of the state. So uh, we faced some challenges that, uh, of course, as, as life is evolving, evolving uh, vendors are trying to push 
and put into this network uh, OS more features, which makes the code more complex. The networks are going more complex, and uh, that's because everyone needs to to provide more features to customers, which are again more complex. So uh, we are working on many tests, which mo most of them is let's say with small and complexity. Complexity. So there was some potential. Okay, we can try to automate this, and uh, most of the and mostly make space for the people work on some on development of the new features and uh, working on the on the things that are let's say moving the network uh, further not to spend time with some something which is old and should work and or have or have some small complexity also that was the important was to try to isolate some human error during the testing because you know, everybody is different. Uh, someone can overlook some important thing. Uh, someone can test the, the same thing differently than the other guy. So if there is something which is, f if the test is automated and the, and the test uh, criteria are well designed, this is possibility how we can avoid this. So these were the challenges that were behind us and uh, the decision was that okay, we need to automate something and really make uh, make the delivery of the of the network uh, OS to the live network faster. Okay, so the automation okay is, is with us for a longer time. Definitely in the software world, with something like a CI/CD that the software is developed and it's automatically automatically tested. Okay, it's passing the criteria. It's it's doing what we need. So that's for the software. It's done. Also, the automation in the in the servers, servers world, or managing of the, the of the routers is is there for the long time. But for the network te and testing and working with the network devices, uh, this was at least uh, a few years ago, maybe two three years ago, like a stone age. And but uh, of course, the the vendors are pushed by the by the operators and customers. Okay, let's do something with your devices. We want to make some things faster give us some api and api so we can uh, work with the devices from from the some from from some programming language and so on so uh okay when we look at the uh, at the on the automation in the networking world uh we found out that okay python became ca cool and definitely at least from my point of view it's a number one for the networking at these days because you have a lot of libraries which are ready to use, like uh, NetMiko, Napalm, about Napalm. We had a presentation last year, which was, I, I think, very interesting. We have Ansible, for which I, I, I guess that most of you know this framework. And then you have some libraries and frameworks which are directly from the, from the vendors, like this JDK that's from Cisco, and uh, Juniper also is providing a library for automation, which is called the Juno Spy uh, EZ. And then we have some uh, initiative going from the ITF, like Netf NetConf, which is protocol that's based on the RPC, and uh, it's the protocol that should enable you to to communicate with the device with the XML messages. Then, okay, on the top of NetConf, there is a Yang, which is a language that's it's for modeling uh, configuration and operation state of the device. And uh, uh, this uh, and the device should have. Uh, the configuration, the various configuration statement modeled in the Yang. So then you can, with using this model, you can create the XML messages with the configuration that can be pushed to the device over the NetConf protocol. Okay, so what was our key factors and challenges for us? Uh, as, I, as I mentioned, our test is mainly about the verification. So it means that uh, operational state is a key for us. Then uh, okay, the young models for the for the operation state are, let's say, just starting. Uh, the the models are available for the for the iOS releases, for example, from Cisco only from the latest one. So you can find some models for this from mid of mid of last year. Regarding uh, also uh, Juniper, it's more or less the same. So uh, okay, this is not uh, let's say the the best the best way at this moment, but okay as I mentioned there are some frameworks which already uh, that were already created, and for example the NetMiko 
is a framework which enables you to some kind of simple management of the device. So you can push some commands, you will get some outputs, you can push the configuration, you can push show commands, which are basically to get the operational state, but that's basically all. Then you need to somehow manually do some stuff. On, on top of this, there is an excellent framework called Napalm, which supports both configuration and also the operational state. So for the Cisco uh, iOS and ISXC flavors, uh, the operational state, uh, you can just do the screen scraping and some parsing of the output. You will see it later in the example. And then you need to somehow fight with this to modify it and make it somehow uh, consumable for the for the programming language and to wait to, to, to use it in the in the automation. For the Juniper, it's it's much better as uh, Juniper had the library which I mentioned and uh, you can uh, get the outputs from the Juniper box already in the XML format, which is more uh, much better and you can. Uh, uh, extract only the the tags and I mean, values which are important for you from the from the XML. Okay, there is also the Ansible, which is more from provisioning and controlling on the devices. Yeah, the Juno Spy S, it's that as I mentioned, so it's for the configuration operational state for, but it's only for the Junos. It's uh, very it's vendor specific. So in our, our in our case, Napalm was the winner as supporting. Uh, supporting uh, Juniper, supporting Cisco, of course, other vendors, but it's providing way to configure the device and it's providing way how to get the operational state, which was the main criteria for us. Okay, so just to summarize, yeah, it was, it's a, Napalm is a cross-platform open source project. So it's supporting iOS, iOS XR, Juno, Sending OS, I think Arista and many more vendors. And uh, you can imagine it like an API to network devices. So you have a set of functions that uh, should be generally available for all the all the vendors. You can uh, you can push the configuration. You can get the operational data, like uh, IP address of the interface, state of the interface, details about your BGP neighbor, get your CPU load, get your memory allocation, and so on. But uh, what we found out that uh, it's an excellent job that was done, especially also the communication with the device, uh, various error state and so on, it's already solved in that, in that uh, framework. So we can use it, but uh, as, as we are service provider and uh, when I checked the, the, the list of functions for the operational state especially, there were some components that were missing, but okay, I'm, I'm trying to be a developer. So uh, what I did that I created a set of functions on top of this, which are bringing more features. So uh, I did an, an Apple extension together with one of my colleague. And uh, mainly there are functions that are providing uh, operational data for ISIS protocol, for the LDP, BFD, BGP, PIM, PIMIS protocol for the multicast, maybe it's not so familiar. Also for the uh, MPLS, MPLS traffic engineering and so on. So uh, because we are operating mainly with the Cisco IOS, XE and Juniper, so the, the functions which I created are on for these two platforms. Uh, they were tested on the Cisco SR1K platform, on the 76 platform and on the Juniper MX platform. These are the big boxes, especially for the for the service providers on the on the edge, maybe some uh, some providers are using in the core network. That's fully fine. But uh, of course, uh, as uh, each the, each vendor has own uh, environment uh, to get the the same output uh, for the same uh, command, it's 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 really difficult sometimes. So uh, if you want to have some details about the about the BGP with uh, the, the standard uh, show command, you can get some parameters, but for the Cisco, but for the Juniper with more or less the same command, you, can, you will get, let's say, different set of attributes. So to make, uh, to make uh, one uh, dictionary, for example, when you are thinking about the Python, with the same values, it's not easy also, uh, each time. So, uh, so it means that for now, as my code is still in the let's say development phase. Uh, I'm let's say finishing with this unification of the different outputs to have it 
to really uh, have the idea of the of the framework that you have the one function that is if been in best case is available for more platform and the output that you have from the function has same attributes okay well, once uh, once this extension is fully done and okay i have in mind some some fixes that needs to be done i will i will try to communicate with the with the maintainer of the napalm and uh, try to try to make it public available if it will be the directly in the napalm release i hope so if not i will try to publish it uh, let's say as an extension or something like this now we are we are going to detail so for example you can see the list of functions that uh, were created for the juniper platform so you have functions for uh, get the get the redundancy info for example because when you are a provider and you have the router usually you have primary engine like uh, controlling the box and you have a, you have a backup so we can want you want to get this information about the state okay are both routing engines on the router up can i rely on the uh, that uh, in case of crash on one routing engine it will be automatically switched to the backup and the router will still be alive then we, you can get the information about the memory allocation details about the, your isi's neighbors topology about the ldp and uh, many other protocols and uh, this is a list of functions for the cisco platform which are at this moment more or less one to one nothing so we can have the same function on both but there are still some small differences because when i was developing the library i started to do the cisco part and then i moved to juniper doing some stuff and then i realized that okay i need to make it somehow uh, to be in line to have uh, the same outputs on on both sides so uh, i'm still working on this for example there is just one case that on cisco platform there is just one function that is displaying you uh, a summary of all uh, l2 vpns but on the on the juniper uh, i have uh, two dedicated functions one is displaying you the point to point vpn l2 vpn one is displaying you the multi-point l2 vpn but uh, this is something i need to tune and to make it available on both platforms for example uh, in the yellow i guess you can see the functions that were added by my colleague antoine and uh, yeah let's let's do quickly yeah we have some time so we, we can go to the some concrete example so uh, one of these is reload test so it basically means that we have a device which is up and running we want to we want to connect to the router get the overall global operational state about the device then we will execute the reload and on the on the on the router so to simulate negative some negative event and then uh, for example power loss might be uh, causing full reload and then okay after let's say 30 minutes when the box is fully stabilized after this operation uh, we can we are going to again to the to the box getting same set of functions and we can compare if if the reload is an operation on the box has no side effect so it means okay what was before reload the state that was on the box before reload is same after the reload uh, yeah so that's basically the the past criteria so you need to check routing protocols routing table memory if you have for example to 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 detect possible memory memory leak and so on uh, this is uh, okay maybe not uh, familiar for everyone but this is the output from the cisco device about the uh, isi's neighbors ISI is IGP protocol. Okay, I guess most of the people knows usually OSPF. ISI is it's uh, another IGP protocol, like OSPF on the uh, link state uh, based on the link states. And this is the output you can get from usually from the Cisco. But uh, it's uh, just the text string, and uh, to make it uh, more comfortable for working, it's not it's not nice uh, to work with it as it is like this. So, for example, you can see now the, the equivalent output uh, as processed by my, my one, of, one of my functions that, that I developed. But now you can see that you have uh, not saying that all of the info, but all of the relevant info that was here. So you can see there is a name of the device which is called on the top uh, top left Bnet P1, and you can see that okay, 
it's a uh, it's it's a name of my peer it's available on uh, over uh, interface gigabit 3 slash 0 slash 17 with some specific IP and the peer is up plus some additional info okay about the peer and uh, when you use napalm and my uh, created functions you will get in the dictionary in Python dictionary the structure with with the as a, as a first key is the name of the box on the second level you have interfaces over which this remote box is available and then per interface you have a list of attributes that uh, were extracted from the from the string output so in the in the red i'm uh, highlighting for example the parameters that are not important for this specific reload test because obviously whole time of the of the device it's a it's a number which will uh, which is decreasing uh based on the how the hellos of the protocol exchanged so okay this is not important also how long the peer is up is not important for this test so these values for example can be removed from the dictionary and will be not be part of the comparison at the end of the at the end of the test here are also some other outputs like uh, this is again from the from the cisco platform so you can see that uh, okay uh, there is a list of slots and list of physical cards that we have in the in the box so it means that okay for example in slot uh, 0 slash 3 we have uh, we have card which is four times fast ethernet and uh, the state of the card is okay so it means card is fully up it's ready for uh, forwarding for the configuring and so on for example if if there is some issue after the reload we could see that the state of the card is, I don't know, maybe down or failed or inserted or something like this. The output below uh, is having the, out it's the output from the, from the memory. So, uh, for example, in my tests uh, for the memory available and used, I'm using 5% tolerance. So it means that uh, uh, the memory after the reload can be different, but not so much because we expect that the everything is uh, all customers are connected again after the reload routing table is converged and so on so the memory load should be more or less the same okay so what are our next steps uh, me and my colleague we are working on the on the web application that uh, will provide the web interface for the users with some predefined list of tests so it will be then very easy for uh, for the for the people to okay pick some tests uh, define the, the running time the start time stop time the interval and the tests in the list will be automatically executed and automatically evaluated so you mean you know that okay these features on this box for this specific release of the os junos or cisco are working fine so I can mention that uh, we used uh, also different uh, Python uh, frameworks like Flask, AP Schedule, SQL Alchemy. And uh, the example of the other test is, for example, manipulation with the BGP parameters. So the, the timers for the BGP, password for the BGP, local preference. Uh, then, OK, we are testing adding, removing network interfaces, manipulation with the routing protocols, and uh, all the stuff, and many, many more tests. And, each time we are checking what's the behavior of the device, if it's expected or not. Uh, this is a, let's say, pre-production version of the portal, which my colleague is working on. So we can see the list of the tests, list of the device, and some parameters for the test, like mostly the scheduler. Uh, yeah, so and that's all. So <laughs> thank you for your attention. And uh, I don't know if there are some questions to, to this. Uh, thank you, Tomasz, for the talk. Uh, we don't have questions on Slido, but you, you are free to ask yeah. uh, if you have yeah, some. Find me on the on the wall. Uh, at the end of the press, which I will share with with the team, there are some links to the to the resources, so you can find the the NumPy library, which is which I was talking mainly about, and for which I created extension. Then you have the links for Ansible, JDK, the, this specific Junos library, and also to the let's say uh, recent recent job, re recent work, and more f and uh, close feature future, which is NetConf and this Young protocol, which should be the let's say new 
new generation of way how to communicate with the device for the configuration and for the operational state. Okay, so if no questions, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much so much.